Hello everybody, this is Jazz Coleman and I'm on the 13th floor. Now, the aim of uh, this program is to recapitulate on some of the tunes that really inspired me, inspired my career there, sort of music where I found common ground with my colleagues in Killing Joke uh, for the best part. So I'm going to have a look at uh, my influences, uh, which, which uh, are predominantly drawn from the late 70s and early 80s. And the first uh, track I'm going to play, a piece of music that actually uh, was very close to me and I know close to the rest of the band at one time. In somewhere around 79, 80, um, I did a co-headline with Joy Division, the, the band Joy Division. And um, th there are many sort of iconic photographs in my mind. I can remember... Um, seeing Ian Curtis, a very fragile-looking Ian Curtis, ho holding hands with his, his little Belgian girlfriend. And um, everywhere he went, he was sort of holding on to her. He looked very insecure. And, and this has always stayed with me. And I remember the last date of the tour with Joy Division. I remember walking backstage, and I had a quick peep in, um, into Joy Division's dressing room. And there they were, just sitting down in deathly silence. Minus Hooky, I may add. Uh, <laughs> and then, then looking over into the Killing Joke dressing room, and like everybody was just partying and smoking and drinking and dancing, and uh, uh, and most raucous. And they called this tour. They, they sort of did scores every night. They called this tour um, uh, Northern Gloom and Southern Stomp. And they used to put like a football score. Um, well, depending on who uh, had the, uh, the greatest effect. And, of course, Hooky was always in our, our dressing room because he, it was party central with Peter Hook, who uh, uh, remains a dear friend of mine. Um, so it was uh, uh, an incredible time <clears throat> uh, to be living in. I remember driving, um, driving to Berlin, listening to the last Joy Division album, I think Closer, and and the, after just learning the news that he 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 committed suicide, and at that time when when he drove to Berlin, the last part I don't know if anyone, anyone ever did it out there. The last part of the journey would always be through this kind of Russian base, which would have all these SS twenty missiles that were quite clearly pointing towards the west. So it was a really crazy time, and of course Berlin at that time was amazing because um, there was a huge subculture. Because most uh, young Germans, uh, uh, to get out of going into the army and conscription, they would go to we uh, West Berlin where uh, they were safe, basically. So it had a massive subculture or counterculture there, um, which was very, very exciting. We ended up recording two albums in, in, in Berlin. Anyway, um, I digress. Um, I, I can remember um, watching many Joy Division concerts um, uh, as we were playing with them. And the first thing you noticed was that the audience never moved. They just stood there and watched. And, and, and sometimes Ian would, would go into this kind of, well, he had epilepsy, as everybody knows. He'd go into these kind of um, trances. But the, I found that the music uh, live, it didn't rock the house, and it actually didn't project, but it was just great on record. And this is one of the things I think we, I, we all came to the conclusions with. Uh, after consulting with Killing Joke. On the other hand, like Killing Joke at the same gigs, the place would just be very physical. It would be a very physical um, expression and a close connection with the audience. So it was different, but it had such a, a strong atmosphere. The track I'm going to play you, She's Lost Control, it is the, the extended 12-inch version, which is just magnificent. And uh, I, 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 I've always had a great respect for Joy Division, especially people like Peter Hook, who he really plays a tenor guitar, and uh, I, Geordie and myself um, played with Peter Hook, and we did the Freispiel project, which very few people are aware of, uh, a German project together, and um, he really wanted to be part of Killing Joke at one point, but he plays a sort of tenor guitar, and, it, and, and while it, we did some amazing recordings together, it, it sounded like a hybrid between Joy Division and Killing Joke, but it was an incredible project. But, um, uh, you know, and, and it's something that we're still talking about doing. But anyway, 
She's Lost Control, this iconic track of the time, um, 79, 80, the 12-inch version. You're going to love this. <laughs> 